In this lesson, we'll look at IELTS pie charts for IELTS Writing Academic Task 1. In this type of task, you'll be given two, three or four pie charts and you have to compare them. It's called a pie chart because it's shaped like a pie, which has been cut into segments. In this particular example, there are two pie charts. You'll usually be given a key to tell you what each segment represents or it may be written on the actual pie chart itself and each segment has a value which will be given in percentages. Let's look at analysing this particular IELTS pie chart. Before you start writing your IELTS task 1 you should make sure that you spend a few minutes analysing what you're looking at and deciding how you will organise your answer. Remember you have 20 minutes to answer the question, which isn't much time, and you must write at least 150 words. The task will tell you what the pie chart is about. In this case, it's comparing immigration and emigration. Immigration is entering a foreign country to live, while emigrating is the act of leaving a country to live in another country. Let's look at some of the key things that you should do to answer this question. Firstly, you will note that it has a year which is 2007. That means that the tense you have to use to describe the IELTS pie chart is the past simple. Secondly, regarding the language, as this is one fixed year, you cannot talk about changes such as increases and decreases. Sometimes you may get two IELTS, IELTS pie charts, each with a different year, so you can do that. But in the case of this IELTS pie chart, it's comparing two activities rather than two years. So you can only use the language of comparison and contrast, such as the most, more than, whereas, however, etc. With pie charts, we also use the words percentage or proportion of to talk about the figures. So to give you an example of the language, you can say the people that you can say the proportion of people migrating to the UK was 30% whereas the proportion of people emigrating was slightly lower at 29%. Thirdly, what you should do when you're analyzing this chart, this type of chart is to identify a key point that stands out from the IELTS pie chart that you can use for an overview. After you have introduced what the IELTS pie chart shows, you should have an overview with this key point in. To do this, it's sometimes a good idea to look for things that are larger, as that's often the most important. In this case of this IELTS pie chart, you can see that moving for a definite job is the most popular reason in both charts. Also, looking for work is a popular reason as well if you add these together. So if you want to group these together, you can group them as employment. So these make up the bulk of the IELTS pie chart. So you could use that as your main point. Once you know what the chart is about and the key point, you need to think about how you will organise it. This is one, one of the most important things you'll do. If the examiner struggles to follow what you have written and gets confused as they read it, you could get a low score for coherence and cohesion. One common mistake with IELTS pie charts is to think that the best way to describe them is one by one. So describe the first one about immigration and then describe the second one about emigration. This isn't usually a good choice because then let's say I'm interested to know the difference between studying in terms of immigration and emigration. The differences will be in different paragraphs so it can be confusing. So it's better to describe the charts item by item it's also a good idea to start with the largest first because this, this is usually the most important thing 
and you should also group similar things if you can. So first you could describe items connected to employment. So in the first body paragraph you would describe moving for a definite job and then looking for work. In the next paragraph you could then describe moving for study and to join the family. In the last paragraph you could group together no reason and other. A very important tip is also that you should discuss all the reasons. If you miss any you are in danger according to the scoring of being limited to a band 4 for task response. That doesn't mean you have to go into great details as you are selecting the important information but you must mention at some point every item listed on the chart. For the IELTS pie chart introduction you should paraphrase the title of the graph don't copy it as it won't get counted. Using some of the same words or phrases is okay but it should not be too similar to the original. You may be able to think of some synonym, synonyms. You can see here an example of a possible introduction. Then for the overview, remember we picked out employment as the most important thing on the IELTS pie chart. So mention this as your overview. Remember that you don't need a conclusion for an IELTS writing task one. Some people do place this overview at the end as a conclusion. That's fine if you wish, but if you place it at the start, you don't need to say it again. Here is an example of an overview. As you can see, the main factor influencing the decision to move was employment. Now take a look at the first body paragraph. A definite job is described first. In relation to employment, having a definite job accounted for 30% of immigration to the UK and this figure was very similar to emigration at 29%. So notice how the language of comparison is used was very similar to. Then looking for a job is discussed. A large percentage of people, 22%, also emigrated because they were looking for a job, though the proportion of people entering the UK for this purpose was noticeably lower at less than a fifth. So notice again how the language of comparison and contrast is used, though and was noticeably lower. Also notice how the language is being varied as well. Rather than just talking about percentages, fractions are also used. As you can see here, we have 12% in the graph, yet here we have less than a fifth. So it's very important to vary your language if you want to get a good score in IELTS. Before we move on to look at the rest of the IELTS pie chart, we'll have a look at this language use <coughs> a bit further. Because it's very important if you want a high score to be able to vary your language. So in IELTS pie charts, you mainly use um, percentages to talk about them. But you also want to learn how these can translate into fractions. For example, 75%. You can also say three quarters. 50% you could say a half, 25% is a quarter. 
65%, it's about two thirds. But also you can use qualifiers to be a bit more accurate with these. So for example, 77%, well that is slightly actually more than three quarters. So you can say just over three quarters. Another example, if you have 49%, well it's not quite 50. So you could say just under a half or 32 percent is almost a third. So it's things like this will really help you to get a better score as it shows the examiner you have a good range of vocabulary and language use. I also mentioned that, that pie, IELTS pie charts are given in percentages. However, again, to vary your language, there's different things you can use. Proportion, amount, majority, minority, minority. You have to be careful actually with this one. This is here, but you have to be careful because you don't know the numbers involved. So for example, if you've got 5% here, we've got a very small number. However, if you're talking about millions of people, 5% could still be a, be a large, large number. So you do have to be careful with that one and if you don't know the numbers you might be better off avoiding that one. But other ones here, 75 to 85 percent, you could say a very large majority, we know that's a majority because out of the 100 percent that's most of them. A significant proportion, here we've got lower ones, that could be called a minority. So you need to look at this kind of language and variations because to get it to get a high score for an IELTS pie chart or any kind of chart, the examiner will be looking that you have a good range of vocabulary and language. In the second body paragraph, study is discussed first. Another major factor inferencing a move to the UK was for formal study with over a quarter of people immigrating for this reason. However, interestingly, only a small minority, 4%, left for this. So however is used to make the comparison for this reason to move. This is definitely a change or a difference that you should not miss when you write your graph because obviously there's a very big difference between this one and this one. So the examiner would definitely expect you to pick up on that. So you should write about it in your IELTS pie chart for sure. You can see they've picked it up here that it's interesting about this, this difference. Next to be discussed is accompanying or joining uh, families. The proportions of those moving to join a family member were nearly the same for immigration and emigration at, at 15 and 13 percent respectively. So you can see the comparison here. were nearly the same. It's worth just mentioning respectively because it's an important word and it does sometimes get people confused about how to use it. It means in the same order as the previous items mentioned. So as immigration is first and emigration is second respectively tells us that these words are in the same order as these numbers. So 15 refers to immigration and 13 refers to emigration. In the final body paragraph, no reason stated and other have been discussed. Although just under a third of migrants gave other reasons or did not give a reason why they emigrated, 
this accounted for only 17% with regards to immigration. What you'll see has been done here actually is these figures have been joined together. This is comes to 32%, which is just under a third. So they've just been linked in as one group. So just under a third of migrants gave other reasons or did not give a reason why they emigrated. However, this only accounted 17% with regards to immigration. Here's a final IELTS pie chart full answer. You can see that the pie chart is introduced here. Next is the overview. Then you have your three body paragraphs. And if, if we look at this final answer, we can also see some of the mix of language uh, that's used in this. I mean, you, you have percentages throughout it. You've got your language of comparison, a large percentage of, though, was noticeably lower, less than a fifth. A small minority were nearly the same. Just under a third. That's just an example of some of the things in there, but you can see overall there's quite a mix of language. So you do have to try and vary your language as you write your pie chart. The examiner will be looking for this. It's important to say that there's not one fixed way to answer an IELTS writing task one. I've shown you one way you could do it, but there are other possible ways. And of course, if you do it another way, you might end up with a different number of paragraphs as well, depending on what you decide, what the similarities and differences are. The important thing is that it's logically organized and easy to read, that you've drawn out the key points, that there's a mix and variation in language, and that you've made comparisons between the data.